this is Captain Chaudhary. Transverse thirst, whether it is a blessing or curse, this is a question I ask to my students. So uh, we will discuss on this today. So usually, so usually the boys, they answer positively, they say that transverse thirst is very useful uh, in ship handling, various aspects of ship handling. Let us try and understand what all uh, uh, areas are there where we use the transverse thirst to our advantage. If we drop port anchor with uh, a slight stern way of the vessel, the cable of port anchor is nicely laid on the seabed. We have seen this. Most of uh, the masters they prefer using port anchor of course you should use starboard anchor also uh, alternately as far as possible then uh, when you come to port side alongside when you want to come port side alongside what happens is you come at an angle something like 25 or 30 degrees to the jetty and then you want to stop the speed also and you want to swing the bow also to starboard so that the ship becomes parallel to the jetty that is another place where we use transverse thirst. Like many a times you must have seen the pilots, they give this uh, dead slow astern order. And the moment there is a sound of propeller turning, they say stop. And if you don't stop, you had it. The reason is the transverse thirst is maximum when you start from the rest. You want to utilize this particular principle for turning the vessel in position. You don't want to go fore and aft on the jetty. So very close to the wharf or on the wharf if pilot says that slow astern you have to be very careful to be ready to give a stop engine as soon as it is called for. Then transverse thirst is also used for swinging out the vessel. Uh, it is very uh, useful the transverse thirst is very useful for swinging out the vessel you know you well, single up to headline and stern line and then you take a slight weight on a stern line or a breast spring aft so that the ship tends to swing out slightly because of that and a little more on this is provided by the transverse thirst when you give a dead slow a stern kick right you slack on the headline and move away from the jetty the transverse thirst is also useful, very useful in turning short round. Normally when we uh, give a, a stern engine, we keep the rudder midships. So a series of dead slow astern with the rudder midship and dead slow ahead with the rudder hard starboard. A set of these movements, depending on how much is the space available, we are able to turn the vessel short round in a limited space. Another advantage is seen on these twin screw propellers. Twin screw propellers uh, have a left hand single screw propeller on the left side, port side and right hand single screw propeller on the right side. This is how you will see the left hand and right hand propeller when you view the ship from stern. When the ship advances, the propeller should be outward turning. Why not inward turning? Suppose I have to take a swift turn to starboard. Then how will I turn the propeller? Left hand propeller will move ahead and right hand propeller will move astern. As we are aware about the uh, characteristic of this right hand single screw propeller, when we move it stern, when the propeller turns to give astern propulsion, the bow goes to starboard. Stern goes to power and bow goes to starboard. So uh, this propeller, right hand propeller, while turning, taking a swift turn to starboard, does its job via transverse thirst in providing a transverse thirst to turn to assist the vessel turning to starboard similarly uh, remember the left hand uh, single screw propeller is turning to give a head propulsion which means that because it is opposite of right hand single screw propeller it will not take the bows to port it will uh, uh, take the bows to starboard so transverse thirst of both these propellers they add up you know to give swift turning but there is one more reason and that reason is less known and that is called uh, off-center effect off-center effect means consider a single propeller say for example left hand single screw propeller it is not in the center line it is on the port side of the center line 
and pivot point is on the center line. So it creates a liver. It creates a liver by the virtue of not being placed on the center line. It creates a liver to turn the vessel because it is off center. This is called off center effect. Similarly, the right hand single screw propeller which is kept on the starboard side will create another lever to turn the vessel to starboard. So all these four effects, two because of transverse thrust and two because of off center effect. This way, uh, 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 you can see that it is better to place or it must be done this way that left hand single screw propeller is kept on the port side, right hand single screw propeller is kept on the starboard side, not the other way around. Now the question is what is the principle behind the transverse thrust? How is it created? So there were a lot of theories which were put forward earlier and one of such theories was one of such theories was the propeller in the lower half cuts through more dense water and this is less dense water. Well, uh, this does not hold good uh, when the propeller is uh, deeply submerged. It also does not hold good uh, unless you know it's a, a, a sandy bottom and uh, while churning the propeller there is a lot of sand that comes in the lower part. So uh, the lower part of the propeller uh, tends to turn uh, in a, a more positive way. It is like oaring effect as if you are putting the oar this way to the port and the ship goes to starboard and therefore the bow goes to port. This theory uh, does not hold good for all the transverse thrust scenario. There is another uh, situation whereby there is water level halfway to the propeller and you can say the upper part of the propeller is churning through the airy medium and the lower part of the propeller is turning through the water. Yes, I would agree. This definitely will cause a lot of transverse thrust because it is as if uh, uh, the ore is uh, placed in the water and it is throwing the water this way. And if the ore throws the water this way, the stern goes this way. But uh, in today's time, these theories don't hold good. So one of the theories which I'm going to tell you is uh, probably a soundest theory. This theory talks sensibly about uh, all the situations in which the transverse thrust take place. We can assume that the forward part of the propeller, so if you look at the ship this way, we can assume that the forward part of the propeller can be divided in two parts. The upper half which is kind of more full, right? Because the ship's body uh, comes in a more full way in the upper part, whereas uh, the lower part can be considered as more streamlined, right? So definitely the suctional currents which come from the lower part of the propeller and upper part of the propeller are bound to be different, bound to, bound to be of different strength, right? So uh, these two uh, uh, streams of water which you know uh, kind of the water that is picked up from the lower part naturally will be more uh, uh, positive compared to the stream that is picked up from the upper part. So what happens to the rudder that is kept behind? So the body of water that is picked up from the lower side it is rather stronger compared to the body of water that is picked up from the upper part naturally because uh, the hull form is different in upper half and lower half. So if you assume that this water that is picked up from the lower part, it hits the upper part of the rudder. Similarly, the uh, water body that is picked up from the upper half, it hits the lower part of the rudder on the other side. So can we therefore say, if we look at the plan view, The force of the stream that hits the rudder from port side is stronger compared to the stream that hits the rudder from the starboard side. 
Now, uh, these forces have got fore and aft component and a thwart shape component. Fore and aft component, a thwart shape component. Now, the fore and aft components, they add up and uh, they propel the vessel. So, uh, we have no problems about this fore and aft component. But if you compare the a thwart shape component, the port side component is stronger than the starboard side component. So, resultant component is uh, application of a small extra force from the port side. Assuming that the rudder is midship, there is this force which will try to turn the vessel on uh, to the starboard side. There is a pivot point as we know on a steady speed, a pivot point one third from uh, the length, one third of the length from forward. So the ship, uh, this small force that is applicable here turns the vessel with this lever. Right, about the pivot point and ship has tendency to turn to port. Now this lever is strongest when we start from the rest because when we start from the rest the ship has to fight against uh, a wall, wall of water you know to start moving uh, through the water. Right, so the lever is maximum so if you want to utilize the transverse thrust it is best uh, to use the transverse thrust as the vessel starts from rest. As the speed becomes steady, the pivot point comes here and the lever uh, reduces in size. So when the lever reduces in size, the transverse thrust effect is also felt uh, less than as you feel in the beginning. Now the transverse thrust in reverse propulsion, let us see what happens. Let us say uh, here is a ship, you have a propeller, the size exaggerated. You have a rudder over here. Divide this flow into two. Then can we say one component is directly hitting the hull. Bang on. It is hitting onto the hull. Whereas there is another component which is sliding away from the hull or moving away from the hull. So this component which is directly hitting the hull is more powerful. Right. And this component by the virtue of hitting the hull you know, takes the stern to port and we feel that the bow is turning to starboard. So uh, this is the situation in respect of stern propulsion. When the vessel starts from rest, like uh, we have to uh, turn a longitudinal body, naturally the pivot point would be considered as at midship. But gradually what happens is once a stern way is maintained right when the vessel starts moving uniformly in the stern direction what happens is this pivot point tends to move aft approximately one fourth of the length from the aft naturally this lever once again is maximum when we start from the rest and gradually reduces to a fixed amount uh, when a steady stern way is achieved